everyone. Welcome once again to the Adventures Travel Club television show. Betty, you know where we are today, yes, right? Yes, of course. Beautiful Austria. Yes, and it really is. We're going to go to a place that Betty and I had never been to before. We're going to go up to Monsi. And uh, we're going to see what's in Monsi, right? Yes, and uh, we're going to show you what we saw in right. Monsi. You know, I didn't know that about this place as many times as we've been to Austria before. But anyway, we uh, stopped here at this privately owned lake, Lake Monsi. And this is a beautiful lake. In fact, our guide was telling us that the lady who owns this lake, uh, she doesn't allow any motorboats on the lake at all. I mean, you can't have a powerboat type of thing. She wants to keep it... Pristine, uh, pristine, no pollution, and you can see how the water looks there. And doesn't isn't she doesn't she have a lot of restrictions on building, and she won't let people build their houses on the lakefront? Was that wasn't that one of the stipulations? Yeah, it very well could have been. I think so. It uh, is very pristine looking, as you say. Uh -huh. About the only thing that you see out there, I, th I think there is maybe a, a boat that goes from village to village, something like that. Yeah. And that may be a motorboat, but. The other things are you saw the little uh, sailboats out there and the yeah uh, she could have going. made a fortune on this uh, property here because She's it's it's an maybe idea making a fortune. well I don't <laughs> know because if she doesn't allow buildings and things she's not she doesn't want she leases it out you ever think For, to lease what what would she lease to the lease, water no to lease the the land out there where the people have got their places. Who knows? Oh, I don't, oh, know. Oh, I don't know either. Yeah. There are some places there. It doesn't there. make any difference. <laughs> Whatever. We're not in that league anyway. But anyway, uh, right from the lake, we're just a short jaunt over here to the little town of Monsi. And Betty, I thought this was really quite nice. You know, you couldn't tell whether you were in Germany or Switzerland here again with these beautiful painted buildings. And look at them. Aren't they? They're just wonderful, aren't they? This is the thing that is so wonderful about being on a bus tour mm -hmm. because you can stop and visit and explore and see see to your well not really to your heart's content because we are on a schedule but we don't miss anything this way That's it sure. is so fun we had a lot of time here and uh, in fact we were going to go see, we wanted to go see the monastery church that was here and uh, so we were stopping here and everybody except me had a stop for ice cream and their ice cream I understand was very very good how come I didn't know you missed out on that who do you suppose shooting the camera oh yeah. Oh, oh. Anyway, okay, here, <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Anyway, here is the monastery church uh, that we can see the outside of. Now, for those of you that love the movie, The Sound of Music, that was produced about 35 years ago, you will remember in this church, is this is the church where Maria uh, was married in yeah. the movie. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it is, it is an actual church, and it's really quite beautiful. And it's attached to a monastery that's right off to the side. But you know, when we walked up to the church, uh, boy, it looks more like apartment building, if you <laughs> look does. at the lower it does, portion, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Yes. Yeah, it, it doesn't, uh, it's kind of, kind of fools you unless you look right on up there. Anyway, we're looking toward the high or the main altar, as we can see here, and this is really quite beautiful. Very it's, ornate. Oh, it is, it's, it's, it's incredible. They picked a very good church to, to do uh -huh. that portion of the movie in. Uh, that you see right here and uh, we'll show you the other side I think which they showed in the movie as as uh, the married couple were walking down the aisle but this is really a magnificent church I thought it was uh, this, uh, church was originally built in Gothic style yes uh, um, and it's and Gothic. then it's yes. Gothic from it the point of architect it's Gothic when you look onto this uh, ceiling yes. this has the characteristics of the Gothic style however in the Baroque period they wanted the light to flood in and uh, they had another attitude all these altars that you see here are in yeah. high baroque style high baroque style so in many churches in austria you find several styles yes. because these churches are very old an exception is the cathedral when you think of the cathedral where we were in that is in early baroque style and it was built within such a short time so we have no mixtures of styles at all yes it where is the Baroque style? The, these altars are all in Baroque style. All the they all and the fences. gold and the fancy stuff. This is all high, high Baroque. Mm -hmm. And Meinrad Guckenbichler was especially famous for for creating these cherubs that look like sweet, delightful little children. Yeah. Yes. And here even the columns are carried by cherubs. In the this is high Baroque style. Remember the cathedral that we saw in the morning which, uh, you know, is not, it's, it's, it's not, it's ornate as well, but not in this way. 
it's uh, more it's cooler still yeah oh, yes. because it is early baroque and here we have high baroque so you uh, can realize the development of the baroque style uh, beautiful picture and all these uh, cherubs very ornate and before one gentleman had asked me how come that uh, some of these churches have so many altars and not just one why so many that's a very good question now why would you think this belonged to a monastery and in the monastery there were so many monks and each of them wanted to say mass himself celebrate mass himself and uh, how could it have how could it be if there was just one altar a day so that means at the same time when one was celebrating high mass at the main altar at the side altars other monks were celebrating uh, what we call is a quiet mass just for himself yeah a low mass you call it when we say to translate it literally would be quiet mass yeah because of that, we have so many altars. They do have the beautiful altars that we saw there. And as you explained, you know, a lot of the priests, there are a lot of the monks celebrating mass at, uh, at one time. And of course, they, at one time, they had quite a few monks that were attached uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the monastery right here. Oh, I'm not would quite that, sure how, how many are there today. Excuse me, I just didn't mean to interrupt you, but ah, uh, if only we had that problem today. Yeah, huh? yeah, be a good problem to have. Yes, it? it would. Anyway, again, those of you who uh, remember the movie Sound of Music, as uh, of course most everybody who visits Austria now uh, will see some sort of uh, uh, place that they had seen in the movie. That church, of course, was one of the places that they that they used in the film too. Well, I think we should recommend the people that are watching the show to go and rent the movie mm -hmm. and and see it for yourself, and then you you will uh, rejoice with us and you'll say, oh. Oh, that's where they went on their trip or that's what they saw so you will have a double pleasure from it yeah that's for sure and uh, again Betty I want to just point out the painting on these buildings where it's are so vivid and so bright and look at the intricacy yeah. here it looks like carved work and stuff but most all of it is uh, is painted work it's really really quite nice it's and it would take an old plain building and make it look very very beautiful it's kind of like three-dimensional. It's like we mm -hmm. would see in the churches, that, it, 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 like in Rome, where you think that there's cherubs there, and it's not really cherubs at all. Just it's painted. just a painted, mm -hmm. but they Instead do it the in such a way. Yes, right. right. Uh -huh. Now, again, here we can see the, the town hall. And remember, most of the town halls, uh, as we'd mentioned before, uh, I'm sure it's the same in Austria as it was in Germany, that uh, there's usually a place to eat there, and it, it could be fairly inexpensive. Again, the flowers were yeah. out. We have to remind people that this town here is, uh, you know, mainly for the people that are that are visiting. I mean, there's a lot of recreation going on on that lake, and this is a place for people to go and stay at, uh, in, in the town of Monsi. And there's hiking trails besides the lake, there's, because as you can see, there's just beautiful, beautiful grounds all the way around. This, I this love town. the colors that they use, they, the, the colors they paint their houses with. I think it's really oh, exciting. Oh, they are so beautiful, and the contrast of the two tones that they have. And, you know, we, we found a little place now we are going to leave the village, so we were going to walk back to the bus, and we found this little pathway here. And you talk about that, Betty. Look at that. Just exactly uh -huh. what you were saying. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I guess a lot of this was done for the year 2000, don't you suppose? Nope, I don't think so. You don't? I think that these things existed way before that. I meant the paint. The new colors. I mean, I the brightness. Think so. I, you know, you think I, they no, I don't. I, I kind of disagree okay, with you. Okay, well, you do that anyway. So that's yeah, okay. but every time we've been there, I mean, everything is so well kept up all the time. I don't. Well, you, know. you go from a year, two years or so. Uh, there's well, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I know you just. It's wanted not to worth go, it. It's you not wanted worth to it. go over and hire out as a painter. That no was way. It. So you but could spend I, I just. Time looking at those I buildings. just guess I like to have my own way. <laughs> <laughs> but but anyway, it's beautiful and, it and it, to, it, to me it looked freshly painted and well, you could be up. right. It could it it could have been spruced up, uh, but I'm sure that those the you know the land is so expensive and those buildings are too. So I'm sure that people are going to want to keep up as much as they can what they what they have. Now this was we are going to go eventually and go on the Danube to take our uh, our boat ride. But Betty, remember we stopped oh, here? Oh, this was incredible. Yes, I remember this. We were all starting to eat, and when all the excitement started, we left our food and went running over to see what was happening. This is a, these are locks, and uh, the I didn't know that they had these on the uh, you know on the major 
uh, rivers there. And uh, anyway, as we stopped, we wanted to see some of the th the boats going through here. Well, because we saw the locks, it was all the lock was filled up over here, but there weren't there weren't any boats to to uh, to see at the moment. But we said, well, we'll just go out and take a look. And then we did. We spotted one of the boats that was coming down. And this boat was from Switzerland. And it's as you can see right here, it's kind of kind of low and like a a, a barge type of uh, boat. But a lot of these boats now, they they you know, go up and down the river, and of course a lot of for tourists. Some you can stay, you know, a day, two, three, four days on because they have cabins on these, or others, like which we're going to get on a little bit later, we spent a few hours going on the on the Danube River. But uh, we saw this one. It was going to go into the lock, and uh, it, what I thought was real cute, somebody else snuck in the lock along with us. See, I think you have to pay for this. Oh, you do pay. Of I, course you, know, you I, do. I think you yeah, have to pay for this. Yeah, there's a because, tax on it. I mean, somebody has to be manning the the locks but we'll see in just a little bit but this was a big one yeah oh this is this is a yeah, beautiful a really super and and look there's uh lounge chairs out there for people to uh lounge out there on that on the upper deck so it was uh it was really something but we were standing on the bridge which is the highway overlooking uh the lock and uh so we had a pretty good viewpoint from right here looking down on it. I, I love doing that, and I love standing there and waving to the people, or even like <laughs> if a, anything that goes by and, and there's uh -huh. people in it, and, you know, they invariably wave back to you, and oh, it course. just makes you feel like you're at home, kind of like. Right. It's fun. It's exciting. And he, here was the little guy that snuck in in his kayak. Oh, yeah. Did you see yeah, that? Yeah. He's keeping a little distance there between himself and the, and the boat. But bicycles, boy, did we see the bicycles on this trip in Europe, I'll tell you. And, uh, you know, for about a gallon of gas, you can rent a bicycle for a day. Wait a minute. For what? Say that again. For a for gallon of gas? You pay for bicycles by, by gasoline? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it costs. You mean it how much a gallon, for how much a gallon it. of gas costs? That's what I mean. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Let's, right. let's, let's explain a little more carefully. You know, <laughs> we don't want to confuse our viewers, Mark. Okay. Well, anyway, we're going to head on down uh, now on the... Uh, on the river in the bus, but we're passing some little villages. Let's see, more bicycle riders. Uh -huh. We're passing a lot of little villages as we go along, and some of these are very picturesque. The river is right off to our right hand side, and the villages uh, and some of the old ruins, like you can see up here, of this old castle. This is what's so exciting, you know. You're you're just ABC. traveling along. And, yeah, there's another bloody castle, that's for sure, <laughs> and a lot of them. And we're going to eventually get over here to Milk. That's where we're going to have uh, a nice little lunch break. And, We're going to uh, have milk with our lunch? Well, I'd rather, rather have some beer, to tell you the truth, because I, <laughs> right. I think it's a little, uh, oh, a little it, more refreshing yeah, in the afternoon, on a good. warm afternoon. Yeah, and their beer is good. So this is a little village of milk, as you can see right here. And up above uh, the village sits the beautiful, beautiful Milk Abbey, which was built by uh, the Benedictines. And that abbey is uh, is really quite something on this particular trip we didn't go through the abbey but uh, we have on on previous trips and you know that abbey is really something i mean it's noted of course for its library which is probably was one of the greatest i think in europe and did you know that napoleon stayed here twice no yes he did, did. he and he liked I'm everything impressed. except one thing can you guess what that was? You want me to throw you yeah. the no, okay. No, 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 no. Okay, and what okay. was that, What Marv? was that one thing? It was the wine. He didn't care for the wine. Can you imagine that? No, I can't. He must have been a beer drinker, see? That, <laughs> well, we all I'm have our sure. own preferences, Evidently. don't we? Mm -hmm. Evidently. But uh, this is a beautiful little village, and I'm glad that we stopped here this time, too. Now, as we look up the hill, you can see that the uh, that the abbey is right here, and the architecture is really quite quite beautiful. It, it doesn't look so big from the viewpoint where we're looking here, but it is quite large. It has very, very large courtyards to it, and the chapel inside is absolutely magnificent. So if you go to Austria and Melk is on your trip, make sure that you, uh, that you go inside the abbey, take enough time to do that. We were going to just stop here for a little bit because we were waiting for uh, our turn to get on our boat, and so we were going to have some refreshments as well here in the in the little town and again i just love this but we got there about siesta time so a lot of the little shops they were closed close up. yeah but they 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 soon opened up and uh we were all ready there to uh ben and judy to spend some money uh, <laughs> oh they're nice they're just nice companions nice people to have along with they us certainly yes are. well so we had a little bit of time and i s spotted this other little church on one of the squares 
here in uh, in Milk, and I said, well, I want to go. You know, you discover little jewels of buildings, and some of these churches, of course, are real jewel boxes, as you can see, uh, with the carvings that go back for centuries, like this one right here, as we mm -hmm. can see. I mean, it's just it's really incredible. Look at the workmanship on I that. I know. Uh -huh. It is. It just, it's very, very fine. Well, they had many, many devout people in those days, too, that this was... Uh, uh, I, I guess now. Well, this probably a lot of this was done by the monks, don't you suppose? Or, I would suppose probably well, you know, so because the a lot gifted of gifted ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A lot of them, you know, uh, and maybe maybe the stained glass too. But you had a lot of wonderful craftsmen, as you can as you can see. And this sort of looks like going into maybe some of our older churches here in the United States mm -hmm. that really kind of copied a lot of this type of uh, artwork and architecture. I think St. John's Cathedral. It would it, of course it's so much lighter and stuff now, but it has it has kind that of feeling that to feeling it. to mm -hmm. it. Yes. Yeah, you're right. And uh, this is uh, the, I don't know. I just get excited when I see this because I think of how much work and how much love went into the labor of all of the things that we see here, and it's it's to me it's it's really overwhelming. And this was just a small little church. I mean, this mm -hmm. was not really big because there you had the abbey up on the hill. But this, of course, was for the townspeople, for their masses every day. And the stained glass windows, are, look at the aren't vibrancy. This, yeah, aren't this the, mm. the windows truly, truly are they beautiful? They really are beautiful. It's something. And so, anyway, we want to just take a couple of looks. See, a couple, couple look-sees. I like that. Uh-huh, look-sees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. look-see. Right. And, again, of course, St. Benedict, of course, and uh, St. Aloysius. Uh, are the pictures of both of them there. St. Benedict, of course, would have influenced... Uh, he was the that, founder. That area. Yeah. He was the founder of, uh, of course, the uh, the abbey up there. And this is the organ. That's the only thing that sort of looked kind modern, of modern. Doesn't modern, doesn't that yeah. look modern? It really did. It was it was something. And in that courtyard, there was a little statue right here, and it, right up behind it, there, of course, you can see okay. the great, great Benedictine Abbey. Of Too Mel. bad that building was right there, because if you could have seen it from and its awesomeness, the building kind of. Well, you know, detracts. actually, I think, Betty, you get a better view from the other side on the river. I do, too. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. You really do. And so now it was our turn to get on the, uh, on the boat here, and we're going to go on the river. This is a beautiful area, one of, probably one of the most beautiful areas. I keep using that word, huh, over and over again, but probably one of the most popular areas. There you go. There's another okay. shot. Oh, yeah. There. Now, okay. that, that, that you see it in its majesty. Mm-hmm. And it's... It, it, believe me, it goes on and on yeah. and on. It is so big. Anyway, we're on the boat now, and that's our view from the boat. So we're going, we're in the uh, Wachau, I don't know if I pronounced that right, uh, valley. And this goes from, we're going to take it about 35 kilometers. We're going to go and we're going to pass some other little villages and some other churches and a lot of other ruins that we see along the way. And this was this was a wonderful day. The wind was blowing. It was warm, but it cooled us off. So it was a great day to spend on the uh, on on the ship. And look, who's there? A few adventurers, right, Betty? I wonder where they came from. <laughs> we, we used to have jackets for everybody. We maybe should go back to that practice that again. That probably wouldn't be a very bad idea. I'll tell you. It's an easy way to keep track of people it for sure me. It is, yeah, for yeah. you. Again, here we see some of the villages as as we pull away from the. Uh, uh, from the town of Melk. And these are really quite nice. Again, there's a highway that you can see there on the other side. I say a highway, it's sort of it's a little road, but it's a highway. They all look the same, though, you know? And here you see there's a lot of camping out there, the little, what they call caravans, or what we would call, a, you know, a little a trailer. Recreational vehicle. Yeah, isn't that Not what you really? would call it, be a yeah, trailer? Look, look at this, another one. Yeah, well, this one. That looks like a, that's a, oh, that's a castle. That's what we remember, our conversation, what's the difference between a castle and a palace? Do you read, now, you know the definition now. What is the difference between a castle and a palace? A palace you live in, and a castle was a fortification. Oh, right? you are so smart. But I, this one is and the... And you can give me a dollar now for asking okay. you the question. This one is the Schoenbuchel Castle. Who? It's who? Schoenbuchel Castle. I thought castle. that's what you said. Okay, yeah. I think we passed it up already. Did we, or is this the same one? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's looks like there's a little chapel inside there, too. Indoor, outdoor chapel right there. There were, there were some magnificent buildings that were here. And I'm glad that these are really kept up today, too. In fact, I think some of these are probably used as... Uh, hotels? Mm-hmm. Hotels. 
and uh, there's also uh, some museums there as well. So, and the area that we're in, uh, there you noticed a little while ago. You said something about wine. You may see some vineyards uh, from time to time here too. That it, looks what kind of th that looks like a child. Oh, it's just a portico. Like what do you look at? That's the entrance hall, or maybe that's a little chapel, huh? The little could have been tiny I'm, one. I'm sure that most of these castles that were there, you know, probably had uh, had a chapel. Yeah, well, but to that it. was too little. What? That one I saw was just like a, an addition to a, I don't know. Maybe that was a mother-in-law unit. Mother-in-law unit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for that size, um, okay. For that size, Now right. look up there in the hill. Yeah. These are the things that amaze me when I see the building. That, of course, these were fortifications. Sure. And you had to be up high in order to protect yourself. Right. So we're on the, on the boat. Now these people should have been upstairs where they could see it. But they well, I preferred think they to be earlier. downstairs. Yeah. And, huh? then, and then came downstairs too because as I said, the wind was blowing a little bit. But you get a good view from here too because the uh, uh, those, those windows are all over the boat here. So you get really great views. There you go. Now there's your terrace land and there are vineyards there too uh -huh. because this is a wine growing area here in the valley and it's really, really quite beautiful as we can see. I don't know why Napoleon didn't like the wine. <laughs> you suppose they gave him some bad wines well, just so he wouldn't return? I don't even know why that was so important to put down in a history book. What difference? Who cares whether he liked it or not? You know? Uh, well, I guess the people from Well, Austria the guys like who made the care, wine but, probably care. Well, they're long dead, but... Uh, yeah, but I oh, mean... Oh, that's a nice picture of Lucina. Oh, she's so nice. She travels with me so much. And this dear little lady from Fairfield brought her... Brought her granddaughter mary and mary was the sweetest darlingest girl she's going to be a dentist is that right yes uh-huh oh, uh -huh. i can't begin to name all of these people because it wouldn't be fair but uh, of course everybody knows gloria because she works at the chancery and brock houses that have been with me so many many trips it's fun to it's fun for me when i have all these repeat people because we're kind of like family when we travel because right. we know each other's whims and all of their peccadillos. <laughs> uh, we have always great groups of people traveling with us and of course this is uh, what makes our traveling so much fun and makes the Adventures Travel Club an awful lot of fun too. So There's our ice cream eater. Oh, huh? I, t I think we had, everybody was an ice cream eater uh, on this particular yeah. trip. It was good. Okay, now this is a ruin, Betty, that you probably know of, right? Why, sure. What's its name? <laughs> <laughs> this is Dernstein. Oh, and this, yes. Okay, yes. now you oh, know. Okay, now I know. When King Richard the Lionheart was held captive on his way back from the Crusades, this is the place where he was held. And uh, as we can see, there's still an awful lot of this left. And uh, I, I wish we would have had time to, there were people that climbed up there, but we didn't have time because we were going to go on to Vienna from here. But this is, a again, this is on the beautiful, beautiful Danube River. And uh, we can see down below there, again, there's, there's wine growing. But this castle, or the fortification. There's wine growing? Mm -hmm, right up there. Wine? Uh huh. Grapes. How does wine grow? Wine, <laughs> it grows in grapes. <laughs> oh, that's better. Then, yeah. what, then what was growing? It was. The grapes were growing. Thank you. Well, w uh, I would think that'd be very, very interesting if we could do go on a trip sometime and see the wine growing. See that you want? <laughs> yeah. Why not? Well, huh? right. If you have enough of it, you're probably going to see it grow. Wine I don't growing. Know. Oh, okay. Anyway, this is a, a beautiful, beautiful place, and I what I like is this church right here because of the colors, the the blue and the white. And I remember this from the time that we were there before, and as we can see, this is. Uh, different type of architecture again you know and look how it's moved in with the other uh, with the the buildings around it which is all part of it it looks like plastic honestly you, when you see you it from so? it well yeah if we if we had another glimpse of it you, it looks like a, a large plastic um, statue like you you know like you buy little statues of uh -huh. things and stuff now take a look at that that's probably if the way that's that it's painted you know it's wedgwood that's what you know the the oh the colors the colors right. and and well they're not plastic though that's china well i could say china it looks like china <laughs> okay oh yeah. by the way that's where we're going to go yes to yeah, china to china yeah all right we're going to wedgwood no we're going to china yeah okay that's great anyway i want to get some pretty pictures of this because it was yeah. or is i should say a beautiful beautiful building and it sits right there right on the side of the river, and it's 
you can see it, you know, for miles as you're coming up to it. And so I wanted to make sure that everybody could enjoy it as much as I did. Well, that's very, very nice of you, and I'm sure they're most appreciative. And yeah. you, well, you notice, you see all the way around here, the various buildings, the one that we just saw with the old barn wood. And, and again, you see the flowers that were everywhere, too. It was it was really beautiful. Nice but, you know, it looks so romantic and stuff, but it sure wouldn't be very great to live in, I'll tell you. I mean, I wonder the plumbing and the hot water and then the hot in the summer and cold in the winter. Oh, I don't but know. But it looks I'm, romantic. Yeah, but I think those Austrians you, have got it pretty well They fixed them up, down, you yeah. think? Oh, yeah. I would, I would suspect so. Anyway, a lot of people were out this day having a lot of fun. I don't remember what day this was, but they were out or as far as whether it was a Sunday or whatever or, or a weekend. But a lot of people were, were there on the, on the river. And there goes our boat. We're going to have to say bye-bye to it because we're going to get onto the bus and we're going to travel in just a little bit and go on to uh to vienna but before we do i had to just take a couple of more pictures of this area because again i thought it was uh yeah. something that we should remember and again the castle where richard the lionheart was held captive actually they uh i think they wanted some ransom money for him and i think it eventually was paid so he got out of there and there's your grapes okay Oh, yeah, that's fine. I can understand grapes. You can understand I, I grapes? understand grapes growing. You're, but not wine growing. No. Actually, okay. I understand vines growing, not vines. that vines grow. Maybe that's what I meant. I, I think, that's think that's the that's vines. Not, okay. And you had W instead of a V. Well, I was going to Vienna, <laughs> <laughs> or Vienna, or Wien, as it's called. <laughs> Whatever. <in> German. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. Uh, again, it might be a place to stay for uh, those of you that are adventurous. Could go ahead and climb up the top of the mountain up there. And uh, I don't know if they kept Richard up on top of the mountain or whether they kept him in the in the bottom and part. The bottom. I'm not sure. Yeah. Any, okay, just to make sure that you know that this is wine country, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> you have There's, a fixation. I guess I do. Well, I just couldn't understand Napoleon saying he didn't like the wine. Well, My goodness sakes. I mean, you know. You well, it's too late, dear. You can't do anything about it. I so just not. resign yourself to the fact Napoleon didn't like wine. I know why. I, you know, I know why he didn't like, like the wine. Because he was partial to French wine. He was French. Oh, well, that's a very right? good answer. All right, so let it go. Okay. All right. Well, I don't know. I can drink both of the wines, and I think they're probably both very good. Betty, it's almost time for us to go. You want to give everybody your phone number? I sure do. 559-488-7443. That's it for this time. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.